Hello everyone, this is a Shadowbox bringing you uh, episode 5 of our um, single player farming simulator 2013 let's play. How are you guys doing today? Um, you can see it is a beautiful evening here in central Kansas. Um, we got some new equipment, namely this thing right here. This is just the default square baler. Um, I figured it was time that we start preparing for cows. So, let me just take a quick look at where our vehicles are. Alright, we've got a tractor up here, and the Ford is here, and there's a harvester here. So let's jump over to the harvester and put him away. See, fold it up. Um, now fold it up. No, did I forget the key? Do, 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 do. Yes, I did. Come on, go. Go. There we go. Let's get this guy parked up. Alright, and there is a tractor over there. Let's hop over to him. Oh, I didn't unload the canola from... That, that harvester still had canola in it, didn't it? I. Uh, yeah, it must have. Duh. Can't believe I didn't catch that. Come on. What? Come on, unload. That's over the trailer. Oh, this harvester really irritates me sometimes with its finicky trailer positioning. It makes it kind of difficult to use with course play too, so I may uh, replace it. Whoa, frame rate is dying. Why is my frame rate dead? There we go. Now we can park up. And let's get this canola dropped off. And let's drop off the trailers. And my frame rate dies every time I look in that direction. I don't know, I think one of the uh I think one of the harvesters has some errors with it. 
And I know it's not the uh, the new titanium pack harvester because uh, the frame rate problems were happening before I got that. So. Oh. Just drive through the hedge there. No problem. Let's hook up to the baler. Let's go get some bailing done. Um, let's see if there's a way I can. I don't want to load. Of course not. Hopefully that didn't. Uh, darn it. Hopefully that didn't completely break the route that I had set up. Guess we should have our beacons on. Let's do some bailing. So yeah, I don't know if you guys have heard of the channel FS Panda Mushroom. I know uh, Dr. Vesuvius and I have talked about him a little bit, but if you're into Farming Simulator, and uh, I assume you are because you're watching this video, you should really give his channel a look. Uh, it's kind of weird, you know, I'm not saying he's weird, I'm just saying that it's kind of weird that I'm saying that considering my channel is so much smaller than his, but um... If you haven't seen his channel, you should definitely check it out, because he really knows his stuff. Um, he claims that some people find his voice a little bit boring. Um, I prefer to call it soothing. Um, it's definitely not as annoying as some of the other commentators out there. He's got some really great content, so make sure you check him out. I'll link his channel in the description so you guys can be as lazy as possible. But just kidding. Anyway, I'm, I'm just going to stop talking now uh, before I get my foot too far into my mouth, and uh, let's just do some bailing. So still very little progress being made on the FSX front. I don't understand why it suddenly decided that it doesn't like me anymore. Um, but yeah, it's uh, every time I go into a menu, the game crashes, like crashes the desktop and restarts itself. And I've tried the UI automation core. DLL fix. I've tried FSUIPC. Um, and while FSUIPC helped me get a better frame rate, it didn't really fix the crash issue. So that's kind of unfortunate there. In fact, it's really unfortunate. Um, I'm even having trouble just recording regular default missions now. Because if I go into a menu for any reason at all, it will crash. And I know that's what a lot of you subscribe to see with FSX, and I know that's in the channel name. And so I, I really do apologize for the lack of it. But hopefully you guys are enjoying the farming simulator and Minecraft content. 
if I get another FTL episode up there. It was, uh, it was enjoyable enough, but it just doesn't seem to have a high replay value for me. Um, it was neat, and it was definitely worth picking up. But I just don't know how often I'll make videos of it. Maybe just once in a while. But for now, I'm focusing on... Well, I'm focusing on trying to get FSX working again. And then focusing on Farming Simulator with a little bit of Minecraft sprinkled in. I'd be willing to do more Minecraft if it got more views, but uh, as it is, I mean... Basically, the view counts and the like counts, comment counts, are how I judge how much you guys are enjoying the series. Um, I've got over 270 subscribers now. Thank you very much for that, by the way. You guys are awesome. And a Minecraft video is only likely to get about 30 views. So it doesn't seem to be that much interest for it on the channel. Um, so my time, to, to me that says that my time is better invested elsewhere. Um, farming Simulator view counts can get to 100, granted not on first day, it takes a little bit to get up there, but they will get there. So I'm more willing to do Farming Simulator for you guys, and, you know, I don't make any money off of YouTube, I did you guys should not see ads on my videos. If you see ads on my videos, please let me know, and I will do my best to, uh... It, okay, I've told YouTube that they are not allowed to put ads on my videos. So if you see ads on my videos, you probably have adware on your computer, and I would recommend a malware scan. Or, if you're not familiar with, uh... If you're really not familiar with computer terms, uh, that'd be like a virus scan. Um, basically, if you're not familiar, the difference between a virus and malware is malware can refer to many things, such as a virus, spyware, or adware, and spyware is where someone installs software on your computer, usually disguising it as something else, and it collects your personal data and sends it back to the, uh, back to the criminal. Um, adware is something that is disguised as something else, and it puts ads everywhere, mostly in your internet usage. So if you have a weird toolbar on your browser and you don't remember how it got there and you're starting to see ads everywhere where you normally wouldn't or you shouldn't see ads, then that is most likely adware. And let's see, we've covered spyware and adware and a virus. Um, as far as I understand it, a virus is just something that breaks your computer. Usually some 14-year-old hacker, you know, just laughing because he's causing misfortune for others. Um, but yeah, that's, that's computer terminology as I understand it. Take it with a grain of salt because I'm not a computer science major, I'm an aeronautical engineering major. Playing farming simulator. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's... That's, uh, computer malware as I understand it. How that relates to farming, it really doesn't, other than the fact that this game is running on a computer. Yeah, there is something about Central Kansas that I really like, and that is the big field sizes and just kind of the openness of it. It's easy to use big machinery here, and I'm a fan of big machinery. However, there are some aspects that I don't like about Central Kansas. One of them being these hills. Now, I know these hills are here to kind of 
I don't know, for lack of a better term, break up the map and, you know, give it a little more character. But I don't really like them. Um, just because of how... They're not very gradual. They're really steep, and you wouldn't see such a dramatic elevation change so quickly, you know, in central Kansas. Sure, that height... You, you might be able to see the top of that hill from way over by the farm, but it wouldn't be a sudden incline like that. It would be very, very gradual, and you would hardly notice it. At least that's what I remember from when I drove through Kansas as I moved across the country. Another thing I don't like about it is the port. Why? <laughs> Why? I mean, I understand Central Kansas is one of the older maps for Farmington. It might have been released before uh, develop before developer tools became available, I don't know. Um. But yeah, it's it's got good things going for it, and it's got bad things going for it. Um, for example, like, that hill thing, I'm pretty hesitant to buy that big field there just because of that hill. I don't know how bad it's gonna mess up the harvesters. I really wanted to make either a corn or a sugar beet field there, and now I'm not so sure. I know some of you might find this boring, um, and I, you know, I apologize for that, but it's farming. <laughs> if you enjoy this game, then I imagine that you enjoy this. <laughs> now, if you don't really enjoy this game, you know, you can watch some of my other videos. You know, show some support to the Minecraft or to the Faster Than Light Let's Plays. Recommend other games for me to play. You know, just don't... You know, in a recent video, Dr. Vesuvius talked about uh, commenting etiquette on his channel, and I really agree with it. In fact, uh, when the channel was still pretty new, back in July, August, I think it was July. I made similar guidelines, as in, you know, don't be a troll. And you guys have been fantastic about that. I haven't had to ban a single commenter. Um, and, you know, this... You guys have been great about your commenting. You know, thank you. You guys have been awesome. Um, however, I'm just kind of saying this as a guideline. You know, keep it up. And, uh, there is, you know, just remember that there is a difference between constructive criticism and criticism. You know, constructive criticism would be, hey, I would prefer if you did something this way, or, hey, would you mind doing this? Uh, non-constructive criticism is just, you know, oh, I hate this, do something else. You know, it's like, y you can suggest, y you can give an idea or give your opinion without tearing down the other person. You know what I mean? Because I do put a lot of time and effort into making videos for you guys, so it hasn't been an issue yet, but it would really suck if uh, all of a sudden someone just came down and was like, oh my god, this is the worst thing ever, do something else. We're nearly done with this field, and uh, I think I'll do the wheat field. I'll bail up the wheat field off camera, 
and then I'll bring you guys back when it's time to collect the bales. Um, the Kenworth, the cat truck that we have, if you remember, we have a flatbed for it. It's over by the sheep currently. Um, that has an auto load function and it holds up to 60 bales. So I really like using that. You know, I don't I don't really mind trailers with an auto load function. In fact, I prefer them because I've seen people, you know, driving down the road, I've seen tractors or trucks towing these large flatbeds with people standing on them and just reaching down and scooping up the hay bale and throwing it on the trailer. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I envision when I use those auto load trailers. But yeah guys, um, just because of the limiting factors about this map that I mentioned earlier, I think we're going to cut the season on Central Kansas short. I don't know how short. Might do a few more videos on it. And then I think we're going to switch maps. Um, FS Panda Mushroom, if you're watching this, uh, I would really like to go to Bittiswell. You know, that's, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, FS Panda Mushroom is doing his Let's Play on Bittiswell. Um, and it's a, it's an excellent map. I downloaded it and I've been playing a bit on it myself and it's large enough where you can use pretty decent size machinery without too much of a hassle, but it's also just a really well done map. I mean the fields aren't as big as the Central Kansas fields obviously, but they're still pretty good and they're interesting. And it's around an interesting town, as I understand it. It's actually based on a real-life area around... Oh, man, I don't remember the city. Like... Lurstershire or something along those lines? Oh, I'm sorry, I probably butchered that. If I had it in front of me, I could be, I'd be able to tell you, but, uh... I don't remember off the top of my head. It's a Shire village that starts with an L. <laughs> but anyway, I'm about to go do the wheat field, and I will bring you guys back when we are uh, collecting the bales. So, see you guys in a minute. Alright guys, we're back. I've parked up the equipment, stored them in their respective sheds, and now... It is time to pick up the bales. Let's jump in the Kenworth. Start it up. Release the brakes. And let's get rolling. Oh, oops. I think I forgot something. Hello, flatbed trailer that is essential for the task at hand. Alright, we need to toggle the load product. Bales normal. Mode automatic. And let's start loading product. Alright, this Kenworth is so fast we actually have to use cruise control level 1 in order to get normal cruise control level 2. So let's just go around and collect these bales. Shouldn't take terribly long. Let's use ES limiter to push it as fast as we can. 
Uh, I just saw the message flash briefly, so that's probably good right there. 17 miles an hour. That's how fast some tractors go at full speed in this game, so not bad. Anyway, so I know last episode, or two episodes ago, whenever it was, I said that I thought we were gonna go for corn instead of cows next. Well, I've kinda changed my mind. I wanna do a little bit more with livestock than what I've been doing. And we do have three good-sized fields. Uh, you know, we're getting good yield out of them. So I think we're fine on the crops front for now. Um, the next thing we go for will most likely be corn, but for the time being, I would really like to start some cows, and I understand that there is good money in cows as well. I've never really done cows before. I know how to take care of them, but, um, and I have, but they've, n it's never been anywhere remotely close to the focus of a farm. And I don't think I'm going to make it the focus of central Kansas, um, Bit to Swell has more livestock options. Uh, they have the Pagan Water mod on it, or it has the Pagan Water mod on it. So I think next season when we go to Bittiswell, uh, we'll focus on a livestock farm. There will still be crops involved, but the crops will be mainly to support the livestock operation, instead of the livestock being a side and the crops being the main. I think that sounds like a pretty good plan for Bit as well. Wow, just this one wheat field, and we've already completely loaded up the Kenworth. So let's turn it off, and let's head up to the barley field. Yeah, one thing that I love hate about central Kansas is the lack of traffic. Now it's nice because you don't have to worry about the stupid AI drivers, but it's also kind of irritating because there's no reason, really, to use your beacons or to drive on the proper side of the road. You know, stuff that simulator enthusiasts generally like to do. Yeah, I get asked why I play this game. Uh, I get asked that question a lot. I'm sure you guys have too. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of people who aren't really into simulators don't really see the point of it. And my answer for them is usually along the lines of, yes, it's tedious. Yes, I can see how you would find it boring. But once you accomplish a task in this game, I just get a sense of satisfaction. You know, that I, almost as if I had finished a project. Or it, it's the feeling that I associate with completing a birdhouse, or you know, building a birdhouse, that sort of thing. You, know, you, you may not like the actual task of doing it, in, I think Dr. Vesuvius said something along the lines of, you know, you, there's, when you're doing it, you're thinking, oh gosh, there's such better ways to spend my time than this, but once you finished, you get that feeling of satisfaction and feeling of accomplishment. You know, when, when you look out your window and you see that birdhouse being used, or when you, on the computer, when you look across the map and you just see lots and lots of fields planted and ready to be harvested. 
It's a similar feeling. It's not exactly the same, but it's similar. Alright, so as you can see, I've moved the bobcat over here from the sheep. And the bobcat is what we're going to be using to operate our uh, automatic mixing station. Mainly because the bobcat's bale physics is a lot better, or are a lot better, than its pallet physics. Um, with the pallet... With the pallet loader on the Bobcat, I was just having a lot of trouble handling the wool pallets. So I ended up, if you remember, we had a front end loader parked with the, uh, parked over here with the sheep. So I kept that front end loader over here and I bought a pallet fork from the bulk handling equipment mod. Even though it doesn't lock onto the bale, or lock onto the pallet like it does with the modded pallets, um, it still handles the pallets decently well. I mean, the pallets don't get stuck on the fork, and it's pretty easy to uh, pick up the pallet and drop it off again. Let's just grab the last of these bales here. I think that's it for this field. Let's go drop these off with the others. Good enough. Alright, um, now guys, I have a bit of a problem, and I want to show this to you. Cows require silage. That much I think we're all aware of. And my main silage source is grass. The only way I have to chaff this grass is either, or to pick up the grass, is either with that class picker upper there, or the kid harvester in that tiny trailer. Now that's fine for, you know, biogas bio plant work. Um, however, I don't think it's going to fly for you know, I wouldn't even be able to get done with one of these rows, and then I would have to haul it all the way over here to the cows and drop it off, and, um, you know, it's just, that's just not gonna fly. So, next episode, we are going to take a look at, uh, take a look at some solutions for that. Um, however, we are gonna need a bit more money for that. And as you can see, if I can, you know, not go right past it, 
We have quite a bit of barley and canola that need to be sold. So in between episodes, uh, I think I'm going to sit around and just wait for great demands on those. And um, once our crops are sold, uh, we'll go about with the uh, solution for that problem. Uh, we haven't had a great demand for barley or canola in a long time, so I got a feeling that uh, one is probably coming up relatively soon. But anyway, until next time, I'm A Shadowbox, and this is Farming Simulator 2013. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for being a great audience, as I mentioned before. And uh, until next time, have a good one, guys.